Another interesting thing to interpret from linear regression line is the slope and sometimes the y-intercept, but especially the slope. The slope, as you remember from your algebra class, at least I remember, is the slope is the change in y per unit of x. Some people called that rise over run, but I'm going to use more of a sentence form here so you can use this to help you interpret it. Change in y per unit of x. So let's recall from the re most recent example that our slope was the 0 0.0180. If you look in our model, that was the number next to our expl explanatory variable, beers. So this is our slope. Now I want to take this and interpret it. So let's recall the y variable, or our response variable, was blood alcohol content, and our x variable was the number of beers. So it's the change in y per unit of x. So this is how the y will change right here, this amount. So that's how our blood alcohol will change per unit of x. And x was measured simply as the number of beers. So using this color-coded method you might see here with the red, the blue, and the orange, watch how this sentence is formed. The blood alcohol content will increase 0.0180 per beer. So you can see here's y. This is the change and it tells how much per beer. Now if we were working with something different and our explanatory variable was in inches, I might say per inch. If we were talking about something and our explanatory variable was in liters, I might say per liter. But in this case, our explanatory variable was simply just counting the number of beers the students were instructed to drink. So again, this is a nice way to summarize it. Another concept we can take away from linear regression is to, we're going to sort of use our correlation coefficient again. We've used it once before to talk about the strength of the linear relationship between our explanatory variable and our response variable. But if we square R, we can get a little more information about what's going on. So it says here the squared correlation, r squared, and if I multiply that by 100%, this will describe the percentage of the variation in y that can be explained by the variation in x. Now I put some alternate wording in there if, it, if you want to reread it with those that this word changes if that makes more sense for you. So we're going to go back to this example. Our correlation coefficient for our blood alcohol content in beers example was 0.894. Now, to get the coefficient of determination, we square r. So if you square 0.894, you'll get 0.799. I'll multiply it times 100% so that's easy for me to talk about it in my sentence. So that's roughly 79.9%. So again, I'm going to take this definition up here and try to apply it with this idea of 79.9% and, of course, our explanatory variable and our response variable. So according to our linear model, 79.9% of the variation in blood alcohol content can be explained by the variation in the number of beers. Now here's the leftover. 20.1% of the variation in blood alcohol content can be explained by other factors. So it's not 100% here. Roughly 80% of these changes we're, we're observing in blood alcohol content are due strictly to the number of beers consumed. Now remember, we can only put two variables in our model, a response variable and an explanatory variable. So it's telling us how well the explanatory variable is doing in explaining these changes in our response variable. Now, I think we all acknowledge other things play into blood alcohol content than just strictly the number of beers consumed. We saw that in their first um, graph where when someone consumed five beers or different students consumed five beers, there was very different blood alcohol content. And can you think of any other factors that could play into this? This is that 20.1% of that variation. Can be explained by other factors that were not in our model. And I think the students who designed the study had other factors in mind, and that's why they were created um, and collected more than just the two variables we examined. So the last word of wisdom here is to be cautious when you're doing linear regression. 
Um, you don't want to make predictions with our regression uh, line that is out of, out of with, an, with an aggression with a regression line that is out of date. So if your data is not current and you're trying to make current predictions, I would not suggest using that model. Dated linear regression lines are not a great idea to use them to make predictions about current things. Also, don't make predictions with values of your explanatory variable that are outside the natural scope of the data. So what does that mean? Well, to use what we were talking about, our data here, the explanatory variable being number of beers, went from 1 to 9. Now, I wouldn't try to make predictions about blood alcohol content, really, honestly, for more than anything of 9 or 10 beers. would not try to go out much further than that. The natural scope of our data was for the values they observed. I'm not sure what happens with blood alcohol content beyond that. It may not be a linear trend anymore, and there's no way for me to know that since the data wasn't collected. So you want to stay within the natural scope of the data that you collected when you want to make predictions. Also, um, remember that a strong correlation or a nice fitting linear regression line doesn't always imply causation. Um, so that was mentioned back in our correlation section, but just because it fits nicely, strong correlation does not mean that X caused Y or that our explanatory variable caused our response variable to change. Um, we can't prove that um, with um, just looking at regression lines and correlation values.